Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for joining me today in this uh, live webinar on natural treatments for old age, according to Ayurveda. So, of course, I'm covering Ayurveda to the extent of my knowledge, and uh, this is all based on the wisdom and ancient teachings of Ayurveda, and I'm teaching it to the best of my knowledge and my experience. Um, the more it could be contributed to the subject. This is a vast subject. And in fact, it's, you know, a specific area of Ayurveda. I mean, mostly I'm in, uh, we, call, we call Kaya Chikisa, which is, means like internal medicine using herbs. This is my specialty for the balance, uh, management of disease. So Kaya Chikisa, this is in uh, Ashtanga Ayurveda, the eight types of Ayurveda treatment. You know, Kaya Chikisa is the one where I'm trained and focused and that's management of disease and treatment. Now, this is a different area of Ayurveda called um, Rasna, Rasna uh, Chikisa. So it's treatment, rejuvenation uh, treatment, Chikisa type of treatment. Rasa is the liquid and the juice of your body that makes a nice complexion and the glow and the nourishment of all your tissues. That's the Rasna. So, uh, this is the treatment of this. So it's a very specialized area. Um, and then specifically when we talk about old age under, under Kaya Chikisa, I mean, Rasna Chikisa, there's many other categories like dosha, Russian, Rasana, Rasiana. So that's like rejuvenating the dosha, you know, um, there's, you know, uh, Sotra Rasiana, rejuvenating a system, say after a type of treatment. And then there's Ojas Rasiana, which is treatment of the immune system and rejuvenating the immune system. But we're talking about Jaiva Rasiana, which Jaiva Rasiana means is rejuvenation to increase longevity. So we're in the broader picture of Ash, uh, Ayurveda. I mean, there's uh, Ashtanga Ayurveda, eight parts of Ayurveda. And this is one part, Rasana Chiksa, rejuvenation therapy, we could say. And of that, we're in the category of um, a Jaiva Rasiana, the um, increasing of longevity and the decreasing of aging signs and symptoms. So it's a science um, and it's not uh, a theory. Um, obviously, all through time, people have been concerned about aging and um, it's uh, science in Ayurveda. And unfortunately with uh, me, not a lot of people come to me for this type of treatment. Maybe this webinar will inspire people more to come for this type of rejuvenation treatment. Uh, of course, mostly we're treating people for disease and serious imbalances and serious health, chronic health conditions. And there are very few people are coming, hey, uh, help me live longer or reduce my aging symptoms. We just, we just don't see these people showing up um, because most people are waiting until situation the condition progresses and is quite serious, often life-threatening or chronic, and they're unable to treat it in any other manner before they seek help. <laughs> it's my experience. <laughs> um, so, or in my case, often the people are going to the doctors first for years, sometimes decades, and then turning to Ayurveda. Um, but in fact, after these in, these treatments, we should always do some Rasiana uh chikisa some rejuvenation therapy um after these treatments we were doing for chronic health conditions which often include uh you know forms of detoxification um uh and cleansing of the body so when you're cleansing the tissue of the body maybe you have joint pain we're cleaning out the toxins in your joints and that's why how Ay ayurveda uh manages and cures um, arthritic joint pain is so cleaning the toxins out of your joints. Same with muscles. We clean the toxins out of your um, muscles. And of course, there's also other aspects of that. But it's a lot of the health conditions we have today are due to toxin accumulation, congestion, blockage, stagnation. Um, and so we need cleansing therapies like Panchakarma, Shodana Chikisa, uh, Shamana Chikisa. These are all detoxification types of treatments for different systems and tissues in the body. But after this type of treatment's done, say you came and you want to lose 
50 pounds. So you fasted, you took herbs, you followed the Ayurvedic diet, you lost your 50 pounds. Well, after this, you should do this type of rejuvenation therapy to rejuvenate your tissue. Say you had even arthritis or any type of in, uh, inflammatory or congestive condition, and we treated it with diet and herbs. And, and after you're done, you should be doing this type of rejuvenation therapy. So for those of you who are my clients, particularly if you're already done with your treatment and you're just happy clients, then you should still consider doing follow-up appointments to allow me to uh, rejuvenate the tissues after treatment. And this goes even for a cardiovascular problem. Say you had a heart problem, high blood pressure or a liver problem with cholesterol and we treated it and it's better. After we're done, we should do rejuvenation treatment for the same systems and the same tissue and not just say, okay, we're done. This is per Ayurveda. So this type of Rasayana therapy, uh, or rejuvenation therapy, that's what it's used for after cleansing, detoxification, and the management of chronic health conditions. So if you have chronic health conditions, you got high blood pressure, cholesterol, diabetes, blood sugar, inflammation, pain, you know, urinating at night, kidney problems, you know, fatty liver issues, any problem with any organ or system in your body, um, then, you know, you're not really going to be focused on this type of Rasiana rejuvenation therapy. You need to treat those health conditions first. And then this follows. Um, of course, sometimes women come to me, oh, what about my skin? You know, my skin, I got these little pimples and spot. And I sometimes say, well, we got to focus on you're not constipated, you're constipated, you have poor digestion, you're not sleeping through the night, you're having anxiety attacks, or you're overweight. You have all these other issues. We'll have to deal with this, you know, improving your skin and stopping your hair to fall out later. Um, because this is just the procedure in Ayurveda is to treat these chronic health conditions first. And of course, one chronic health condition can be just depletion, high vata vudi or high vata, which is, you know, the qualities of light, cold, dry, active, mobile, and rough. If these get into your system, into your joints, for example, um, your bones, then you have too much vata or too much air in your bones, and then they become uh, weak and depleted. So, you know, when you have depletion in the body, then you're having aging, you're aging the tissue because it's depleted. So there's often cases where we have to do both simultaneously. Say you have a thin underweight vata and she has joint pain, but we cannot cleanse and detox too much because she's already underweight. So we do some cleansing therapies to clean out the joints and the muscles and the colon, and then some rejuvenation therapy at the same time with the food so she doesn't become more depleted. So it becomes more uh, complex in a way because we have to rejuvenate the person and detox them simultaneously. So this is the third category of treatment when we're doing both simultaneously. And for, in fact, all clients, when they come, I have to you know, decide where, is the, where I'm going to lean with my treatment towards rejuvenation or towards uh, cleansing or a combination of the two. So today we're talking about this type of rejuvenation uh, therapy um, and the signs that um, these therapies are working and the signs that you have good, um, you're rejuvenated and healthy is of course the balance of all the doshas. Many people have misunderstanding of what is healthy. They just think, well, I'm you know, going around every day, getting through my day. Uh, I'm not in pain. Maybe I'm not taking, you're not taking any meds. So that's the conclusion that you must be healthy. But in fact, according to Ayurveda, you should have a long life. You should live to 100 years. Um, your aging process should be very slow. Uh, you should maintain your youthfulness. Uh, you should have good memory, um, good uh, intelligence still, um, and of course, a good digestion and good elimination. And all the doshas, vatpatakapha, are balanced. So this is a true sign of health. Um, and of course, many of us don't have this state of optimum health mostly because our standards are too low. We don't uh, acknowledge a lot of our health problems. Like if we're not going to the bowel movements every day, we, just, well, we live with it. I think it's normal. If we're urinating at night, we live with it. If we don't sleep through the night, we live with it. If we have a little joint pain, we live with it. And this is the problem because all these conditions progress. So um, here we're going to talk about rejuvenating the person and achieving this type of optimum health after you've treated all your major health conditions. 
Um, and then the, according to Ayurveda, this person who has excellent health or balance of samadosha, balance of all doshas and good ojas, immunity, um, would have luster to their face, not dull, have good color, good complexion, not pale. Um, and of course, not too red or inflamed as well. Um, and um, should have uh, good uh, power of concentration and um, good energy, vitality, uh, confidence, and courage, and clarity of sensory perception. Um, and of course, good ojas or good immunity resistance to disease. So these are the signs of good health. And rejuvenation therapy is the treatment to achieve this after you've balanced your doshas, have a good agni digestion, good elimination, and no chronic health conditions. So again, I repeat, you have to take care of those issues first. So let's look at some of the common symptoms to aging. Um, and we just go by the these areas according to Ayurveda. The skin, um, of course, um, lack of fat underneath the skin, uh, thin skin can be an issue. Uh, aging, the skin, it's a poor metabolism of the liver of the fat, and then the skin gets thin, and the bones start protruding, and the veins start protruding. This is a sign of aging. Grain of hair. Um, I think I'm not doing too bad there for uh, 59. A huh? little, little gray there on the side, but uh, still going. Um, still got some brown ones coming out here on the top. It's a good sign. Um, eyes, a decrease in the pupil size is a sign of aging, and of course, a decrease of your vision capacity. Ears, decrease of hearing, and sen highly sensitive to loud sounds, also another sign of aging. Cardiovascular system, you know, the cardiac output decreases. So often you can end up with low blood pressure as you age. And of course, as we age is a vata condition. You know, as per Ayurveda, in beginning of life is kapha, so we are a pudgy little baby. And then pitta, you know, we're at our prime in the middle of our life, our ambition and our drive. And then later in life, we enter a vata stage where we start to, our, our tissue start to become depleted. Um, and uh, vata is the most aging. See, vata is the type of depletion in tissue, so it's aging. Pitta also is inflammation in the tissue and burning. It's also depleting. Kapha, of course, in the tissue is building and strengthening and congesting. So uh, it's vata and pitta mostly are the uh, causes of aging. Well, kapha is causing more sangha, blockage, congestion, and weight gain. Um, so reproductive system, of course, uh, less elasticity uh, for the women and more dryness. For men, enlargement of prostate and decreased uh, renal blood flow. Um, um, of course, uh, uh, in your mind, less ability to concentrate. Um, in your nervous system, decrease your stress tolerance, and even your digestive system, you can have less enzymes through, you know, the pancreatic blockage, so the enzymes aren't secreting as much. Your uh, liver is maybe not secreting as much gallbladder, so uh, these are common. Even decrease in um, colon uh, motions, uh, muscular skeletal system, bone mass can de deplete later in life, a loss of muscle tone can deplete later in life, and even endocrine system can uh, produce less um, uh, hormones, um, including, you know, growth hormones, of course, and lower estrogen. So these are signs and symptoms of aging. Now, in Ayurveda, we have a three forms of treatment for, of course, is changing the diet um, and do the lifestyle and three uh, herbal remedies. So these are three categories we're going to talk about here. And then, according to Ayurveda, too, you know, we can treat different tissue in the body that is uh, needs to be rejuvenated. So if you were to very serious about, you know, aging and this rejuvenation type of treatment, and you were my client and you came to me, which I hope after this a webinar, more people do um, say, hey, just rejuvenate me. I have no more health problems. That would be wonderful if I had these clients. Maybe I should have a special price. You know, if you're a five health, chronic health conditions, then you pay full price. But if you have no major health issues and you just want rejuvenation, and then maybe we should have discount price for you folks. But uh, anyway, you saw the discount right there, um, which I'm giving you if you mention this, um, that you saw the webinar. But in Ayurveda, I would assess your seven main tissue 
in your body and determine which tissues are depleted. Mostly it's going to be too much vata or sometimes too much pitta or pit kapha is blocking the, the, the nourishment of the tissue. But we would see which tissues are needed of treatment. First of all, we're just not starting off in a general sense. And we'd look at rasa first. This is the, like the liquid of your body, the moisture of your body, your lymphatic system. The rasa almost means like juice, you know. So, you know, if you have a lot of rasa, then you're a juicy person, you know. There's moisture, there's juice. It's the opposite of a dried out person. I mean, dried out. It, it doesn't sound very sexy. I mean, everybody want to be a little juicy. So juice is a sign. Juiciness. Rasa means juicy. So, you know, in Ayurveda, there's some little joke. It's Ayurveda joke. And you see an attractive woman with full figure. You can say, oh, baby, you got nice rasa. You know, so this is this rasa, this tissue that's making up the, the, the full body shape of her. And this is opposite of, of course, somebody who's very dry, dehydrated. They're having low rasa, depleted rasa. So we look at your skin. This rasa, of course, is covering your skin. The surface of your skin is example of your rasa. A lot of dryness and spots or shows that this on the skin shows the uh, imbalance of the rasa. So if you had a lot of wrinkles, we'd be treating a rasa. Um, and then rakta is your blood. Any depletion uh, in your blood? I mean, as sometimes as we age, digestion gets poor because of lower enzymes from our pancreas, less bile from our liver. We're unable to uh, metabolize and digest uh, nutrients and minerals sufficiently. And then we start to have depletion in the blood and nutritional deficiencies show up. So that's rakta, depletion in the blood. It's very similar to what the doctor would find when he did blood work and he saw, oh, you're low in vitamin D, you're low in calcium, you're low in zinc. This is this is depleted rakta, depleted blood. We treat in Ayurveda. We're going to cover some of these herbs that do this. And then mamsa is a um, muscle. So if you're very weak, you can't pick up the trash and your muscles are sore and weak, not inflamed, but just weak. Um, then, then we rejuvenate your muscles. Um, and then medda fat, if you're skinny, bony, no fat, ribs are sticking out, you're underweight, then, you know, this is a depleted state of fat tissue, medda dasu. And ashti, you know, this is when, you know, there's um, uh, degenerative bones, osteopenia, um, and then we treat the bones. Medja is a nervous system when there's aging and depletion in the medja or nervous system, we become hypersensitive, nervous, and uh, and uh, even more anxious. And then, of course, the reproductive system, where, of course, um, uh, you can have, uh, you know, uh, for men, you can have ED and other type of, of male issues. And, of course, uh, for women, a little out of our scope today, because, again, dealing with reproductive system, is a specialized category in Ayurveda. So we're not gonna spend much time there because it's a whole nother subject. So first thing to do would be diagnose yourself or allow somebody like an Ayurvedic practitioner like myself to diagnose which tissues in your body need treatment of this type of rejuvenation treatment. Because there's some foods and herbs that are specific for that treatment. For example, cucumbers and zucchini are very good for your skin and your rasa because they're juicy. You know, and beets and carrots are good for your blood because they got a lot of minerals. A pumpkin and a doll are good for your mamsa because they have, uh, the doll has the um, uh, protein, we could say. And uh, pumpkin and even mango helps building muscles. And ghee um, and is good for your fat tissue and your nerves. Milk is good for your bones and your reproductive system. So that's just an example. We're going to talk about some herbs for different um, areas as well. But I wanted to cover some. Uh, so there's diet. Diet is very critical here. So anybody who's trying to improve their skin or identify which tissues need to be restored or rejuvenated after treatment, then I will adjust the diet will make a difference. And then also lifestyle is very important for Vata um, to rejuvenate yourself you know, after maybe a long period of stress, surgery, or detoxification, or Ayurvedic treatment, or even a type of chemotherapy, then you'd want to, this is when you want to do this rejuvenation 
treatment, when you're depleted, burned out, this type of state, uh, or long periods of detoxing or fasting. Um, so uh, lifestyle habits, we'd want to change, uh, um, dinacharya, our, our daily schedule. For vata, minimize travel, not be traveling, maintain only positive relationships with people, no negative relationships, cut, finish, let them go. Um, and avoid unknown places and situations that could induce anxiety and fear and loneliness. But that shouldn't be alone. So you should take a nice vacation, get away from your work and, um, and not travel and rest in one place. For Pitta person, um, you know, they should not uh, indulge in arguing, controlling people, forgiving themselves, let forgiving themselves for mistakes and not being too much of a perfectionist. Now, I read that and I thought to myself, oh, that's me, darn. I need to chill out, not be such a perfectionist. But you know, in my profession, I think it's very important to be a perfectionist <laughs> because I'm dealing with people's health and I, I, I like that quality in me. But when I'm on vacation and I wanna rejuvenate myself, I need to let go of that quality in me that is uh, trying to always do things perfectly and is possibly too tough on myself and of course everybody who works for me knows i'm too tough on everybody who works for me but <laughs> i went on vacation i need to chill out and relax and if you're a kapha uh type of person that actually the opposite you know you should let go of um you know your dependence uh your attack your attachments to things um and be more active be more creative be more flexible and get more physical activity and of course, there's asanas and pranayama practices that can be incorporated as well. But again, this is outside of the, my expertise. I'm, I practice, I'm a kaya chikisa, which is basically herbalist for everything. You know, <laughs> you have any problem, I give you herbs. So this is my form of treatment and uh, supported by diet and lifestyle habits. So uh, asana, pranayama is another expertise, which um, also is included in this type of treatment. Now, um, so you could say in ancient times, the, the treatment was basically to go away from the stress of work and the stress of uh, life and to be away for up to one month and even some serious health conditions. And ancient texts said it could take up to one year for the person to be away from their responsibilities, away from their job duties and go into like a retreat or a cottage, uh, you know, uh, in the jungle, <laughs> away from your responsibilities, away from pollution, away from noise, away from other people to allow you to re rest. And this rejuvenation of the complete body would, could take anywhere from a month, minimum 28 days, to up to um, 12 cycles of the moon or one year. And in that case, you would get sneha, which is you know, type, uh, ab abhyanga, oil massage, steam therapy, and other type of rejuvenative herbs along with your diet. So that would be the complete treatment, change of diet per your dosha and which tissue need to be re rejuvenated. Uh, lifestyle changes, which would mostly include rest, relaxation, except for kapha, who should be, you know, walking more and more <laughs> activity and less seating. And then, of course, yoga, asana, pranayama, meditation, and your spiritual practices. All of these will help in rejuvenation. Um, so what's remaining now, of course, is the herbal treatments. And uh, herbal treatments, you know, really depend on the individual and depend on the, um, the part of the body. We'll go through some common rasayana herbs here in a minute. The number one rasayana strengthening rejuvenating herb for uh vata is of course ashwagandha and of course this is very good quality ashwagandha it was uh wild crafted for me by request collected soaked in milk uh before it was dried so this is a uh, very very good quality restorative uh, uh for vata now of course Ashwagandha is also building and strengthening. So if you're too kapha, you can't be taking a lot of ashwagandha if you're trying to lose weight. And if you're too pitta, there is there is a type of heating inflammatory aspects to ashwagandha. Now this ashwagandha apparently doesn't have that because they soaked it in 
uh, milk first. But uh, ashwagandha is the premier herb for balancing and restoring and rejuvenating vata dosha. It's a thin, light, cold, dry person. Now for pitta, where there's more heat and sharp qualities and still mobility, um, then shatavari is the preferred herb. Shatavari is sweet, cooling, rejuvenative, very good for uh, the reproductive system for both men and women. And I'll show you some formulas in a minute that are using them. Uh, and then bala, of course, is also rejuvenative. It's bala means strength. So you can see this is used quite a bit in herbal formulas. Shilajit, which is a mineral uh, proxy, shilajit. This is a pure shilajit in powder form. Um, of course, you know, it is processed traditionally in trifla. So they do clean it and, 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 and treat it with trifla so that it's um, easier to digest. And this is actually an extract, shilajit, dry extract. And it's basically shilajit is like a, a mineral supplement. I mean, it's a, like your trace mineral supplements. Fulvic acid, um, uh, fulvic acid and other types of trace minerals in there, zinc um, and other things um, are, are in shilajit to bring, strengthen, and rejuvenate your, your bones. Oh. Um, so here we go. And, and if we are really to pick one, um, one product that's rejuvenative that really everybody could take um, is here, Chawan Prash. Uh, many people have seen Chawan Prash. Of course, I import this one from India, so you've got the little... Hindi characters on there. Um, and Chama Prash, of course, is in honey, ghee, uh, and it's good for a building uh, immune system. And the Indian government has advised everybody to take one teaspoon of Chawan Prash because it's building ojas and immunity. And so uh, many people in India are taking this to prevent the uh, uh, respiratory infections and build their immune system. So Chawan Prash is given out to children who are weak, anybody who's susceptible to infections or cold or flu. Um, and mostly it's taken in the winter. I, me and my family, we only take it in the winter time. This is a little warming, a little hot. And, uh, you know, we have pretty good immunity. You never get sick, never get cold. Um, uh, mashallah. Um, but uh, in the winter time, we take one teaspoon every day of Shalom Prash. So um, for... Western herbs, you know, we don't have as many herbs that are building because most of our Western herbal products are in tea. And, you know, tea is not as strengthening because and building, it's not a rejuvenative or a pure rasiana. You know, we, liquids would be like milk and aloe vera and honey and ghee. These are all building and strengthening. Um, so teas generally don't have this quality uh, because they're just extractions of the actual herbs. So you see most rasianas, they are generally in a type of jam or mixed with honey or butter or liquid form. Um, but we do have one here we use, and we could say it's a Western type of rasiana, vitamin, mineral tea. And, you know, we have many, you know, nutritious herbs in there, you know, uh, uh, alfalfa, which is what horse live on, nettle, which is maybe one of the most nutritious plants, horsetail, which has got a lot of minerals and vitamins, hibiscus, which is vitamin C, you know, lemon balm, vitamin C, and then cinnamon, coriander, and stevia just for the taste. So, you know, I would say it's a mild rasiana. We give it to uh, elderly people, children pe people, children who are depleted, uh, but it's not going to put on weight or be that building, but it's the most we have for Western herbs. Mostly this type of treatment is used in Western herbs. We also have other things we use like this one called Vata Superfood, very nutritional. And we have in there ashwagandha, which we mentioned earlier is a builder. So this would, you know, a lot of vatas are very depleted. So we give them this instead of all those cheap synthetic vitamins they're buying, we crash dashamula. Dashamula means 10 roots. So this is also building a lot of minerals. Spirulina, corella, many people know is a super food, true super food with all your vitamins, minerals, protein, and even fat. Ashwagandha, which we covered, which is building muscles, tissue, 
and helping support the nervous system beetroot powder which is of course again full of nutrients little cumin cinnamon and kelp and ginger to help you digest it and kelp of course for those trace minerals so this is also rejuvenative type of treatment um, for weakness we have other ones here here's another one we call vata balancing jam and in in india see it says builds and rejuvenates for low body weight muscle weakness detoxifies the blood neurological disorders and the main herb is ashwagandha and then some other and raisins even cardamom ghee um you know and honey and other things it's like a jam and the indian name of course is uh, ashwagandha adi adi means other things so it's ashwagandha with other herbs uh leha leha means it's like a really thick jam you can just you have to pull it off the spoon so you just take one it's really building and thick it's like a little meal uh, but it's balancing vata very well um it's good for people who are underweight and depleted and you know and that's who we provide it for um we also have there's also specialized rejuvenation herbs in ayurveda like this one here um is also an ayurvedic formula we call it healing lungi and this is for recovery after asthma bronchial issues respiratory infections um and such and uh, well, it says for lung infection but it's really for after the lung infection most respiratory conditions and again we got dashamula bala which we mentioned pipali haritaki um and pushkar mula which is good for respiratory system uh chikrat and there's the ghee sesame oil honey and jaggery so this is like a jam like we call leham very thick slides down and it's rejuvenative for the uh respiratory system so after uh, an infection after you had an infection or cold or long cold then you would take that afterwards to rejuvenate your lungs and that's a very good example of how rasiana is working you can see many people they've had lung infection or a chronic cold for months and they still have some chest pain they, but it's over there's no infection you know they're testing you know negative for the infection but they still feel the chest pain that's when we provide this type of restorative for the lungs and that's the way it works say you have joint pain and we treated it well you know maybe you have the pains gone but we haven't really restored those joints so anybody who's had arthritic treatment with me you should always do the rasiana treatment for the joints and muscles afterwards we also have some specialized one this one's actually called uh, restorative tabs we call it restorative tabs of course we give them the, in, in India, you can see the real name there. It's called Amlaki Rasiana. See, and it's even got the name Rasiana on it. Just what we're talking about. So this uh, this is actually the juice of the Amlaki berry, and you can see we use it mostly for modulating immune systems, autoimmune conditions. But it's very cooling. It tones down the immune system when it's overreacting, reduces burning sensations, acidity, ulcers, improves most eye conditions. We give it out for eye uh degenerative eye conditions and immunity um and autoimmunity so uh and hair loss and, and it even says they're anti-aging so you know we have some products that are general use for this but particularly if we have persons aging their hair's falling out their eyes are depleted they're a in, little inflamed or their immune system is overactive like in any autoimmune condition then that's a perfect perfect product and it's the juice of the amlaki drive see there's amlaki we have amlaki powder, we have amlaki fruit, but this is the juice of the fruit dried in the sun. And then what is left after it dries is like a little film. And then I scrape up that film and make these little uh, uh, tablets called <laughs> amlaki rasiana. And because it's the juice of the amla, and it's very restorative and we use it for eyes, we use it for immune system, autoimmune conditions, as I mentioned, and hair loss. And also, um, there's also some tonics that we use. Um, this one is called um, strengthening tonic. And usually when I see that word, it, the Indian name is called uh, Bala Rishta, I think this one is this one. Or, or this one's, oh, this one's Bala Ashwagandha. Maybe uh, Bala, the strengthening herb that I showed you earlier, plus 
um, ashwagandha and water and jaggery, uh, little castor oil, rasna, clove, and gokshura. So the two key ones are bala, which means strength, ashwagandha, which is building, and you can see improved strength of muscles, muscle bones, promotes nourishment and digestive system, vata balancing. So this is this is called uh, bala rista. Rista means it's fermented. There's a little alcohol in it, like it's a, like a, almost a wine. It's very light. We usually use the ristas when that digestion is poor and the person can't have these heavy other formulas. And that one's kind of warm. So we have one for pitta. We call it sweet digestive tonic. Um, and it's called draksha rista, made from grapes. And there's grapes and jaggery and cinnamon. It's very tasty. Um, we use it for people that have hyperacidity, sore throat, coughs, asthma. Uh, it's very soothing in some inflammatory skin conditions. Um, and it's highly nutritious and even good for children. So it's also considered an Ayurveda Arasyan, a rejuvenative. It's, it's not scraping and cleaning fat. It's not flushing out your colon, cleaning out your liver. No, it's building, strengthening, and rejuvenating. Um, we also have some oils. Um, like there's, a, we have one called Bala Ashwagandha uh, oil, we call strengthening, but here's just sesame oil is a good idea. Uh, sesame oil is uh, warm and nutritious, and this can be massaged on the body on a regular basis, and it can help you tremendously to strengthen your body. So in Ayurveda, you would get an oil massage. Oil massage is used extensively in um, rejuvenation therapy. Uh, for vata, sesame oil, for pitta, use uh, uh, coconut oil if they're warm and hot and red. Um, and for uh, kapha, you would use like sunflower oil or something like that. So this is the one called ashwagandha bala oil. And this is the, for weakness, see, muscle weakness and fatigue. We even give it out for people like, you know, have degenerative muscle conditions, even like MS, where their muscles are really weak and frail then we we give them this um you know we ashwagandha bala talam means ashwagandha and bala are in the oil and they're massaged every day every day for many days and you can see tremendous improvement in very weak muscles with that so those those are mostly treating your muscles and um the oils are mostly for your muscles um the tonics are more nutritional and, and absorbed quickly um, and then if your digestion is better, we have these, uh, um, uh, we call adrenal tonics, you know, kind of a Western term, but we could call it restorative. This one is for vata, you know, supports healthy adrenals, provides non-stimulated energy and helps. But there you can see some of the same herbs. There's ashwagandha, uh, Vidari Khan's next. It's like a dried potato. Um, Bala, Brahmi's for the nerve, Tulsi's for the immune system, cinnamon for your circulation, cumin and ginger to help digest it because it's kind of a heavy formula and of course uh licorice um so this is oh, good for muscles good for nerves we also have some bone formulas um that can be specific just for the bones uh that last one um was uh uh here it is right here this so if you had a bone issue we'd use this would be like a rejuvenative for the bone, let's see, bone building. See, it's just basically, these are all herbs, Ashishringala, uh, Prabhupishti, um, Arjuna, and there's Bala again. See, we see Bala everywhere, and Dashamula everywhere, because these are very nutritional building herbs. So, uh, and Moringa, which is highly nutritious, but it's very hot. Um, so this is for building bones, and the ginger, again, is just helping you to digest it, because Prabhupishti, you know, it's a type of coral and it's high in calcium, but you, you need a little ginger to help you digest it. So this would be treating degenerative or aging bones. We give you our bone formula. Um, it also have these bone tabs, which are, um, there you see the ashwagandha in there again. Uh, but this is called Lajalut Gugulu, and it's a type of resin mixed with some herbs, Arjuna ashwagandha um, that are given for building the bones for degenerative bone conditions. This is osteoarthritis and very high in minerals too. So there's many of these traditional uh, formulas that are used in Ayurveda. If, and the, this adrenal formula here is kind of warm and hot with the ginger, 
So if the person is hot already, pitta prakriti, or have a pitta vikriti with heat, inflammation, burning, even hot flashes, then we'd have to give you this one because it's got a little more cooling. See, there's ashwagandha still there, bala is still there, but now we have shatavari, which is the other rejuvenative for pitta. Brahmi is good for vata and pitta conch, which you use for Parkinson's and neurological issues. Um, and then um, coriander is and cardamom is for the digestion, both cooling. So this is very similar to the other adrenal tonic, but it's not heating. But you can see the imp supporting the the same, just schooling. That's the only difference. And provides energy, reduces anxiety, good for the nervous systems. So uh, that pretty much covered the, the products that I have. Of course, according to Ayurveda, there are certain herbs for those of you who are studying Ayurveda that are specific for each organ and each system in your body. And mostly we're using formulas, but sometimes when you want to really treat a, um, uh, you know, a particular organ, say you had a, a cancer in the, in, the, in the liver and you've recovered and it's been years later, then we would do a rejuvenation treatment for the liver. So, you know, for the hair, we use mostly bring Raj. We do have some formulas for hair as well, um, you know, and uh, for the mind, Brahmi, um, for the thyroid, Kaishor Guglu, for the skin, Manjista, turmeric, Neem, for the liver, Kukti, uh, for reproductive, I mean, for reproductive system. And there's Bring Raj. We have it in oil form, but Bring Raj is good for the hair. We have a hair formula that's made with Bring Raj. And we also have hair oil made with Bring Raj. And this is the premier herb for hair. So often we give it in the hair formula with some other herbs and we give it in oil, pure Bring Raj oil for the hair. We use both together. Um, and there we can really focus if it's for hair loss. And that's the main issue. Then we, we can really focus on that single herb because we know this is the best herb for this condition, even though there may be supportive herbs. For the liver, probably the premier herb is Kukti. Um, and, um, you know, for the joints, probably the premier formula is Yogaraj Gugulu, um, and the female reproductive system, the premier herb is Ashoka. So even after birth, there's rejuvenation therapies for the woman's uterus, um, and any type of surgery, car accident, you know, there always should, these are the opportunities to do rejuvenation therapy. You know, so we do have one for hair and nails. And you can see first ingredient, bring Raj. There's Amlaki also, Gumala, Brahmi, Gotkola, Ashwagandha, Prabhu Punchment is a Prabhu Punchment is uh, five things from the sea, the shell, the, 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 the oyster, the, the pearl, you know, conch, shell, and coral. These are the, all from the ocean and they're high in minerals and good for building the bones. So all those herbs are very nourishing, soothing, and rejuvenating. And mostly you'll find they have a kind of a sweet taste. And the herbs should be taken in what's called a pana, uh, uh, anupana, a carrier to go with it. So if you're building the bone, say you're doing the bone building formula, if we look carefully, it says right on there, uh, take with uh, in warm milk. So that's considered the anupana milk and we don't mean pasteurized homogenized milk we need the raw milk so taking it in the right carrier you have to have the right herb for the right tissue in this case we're talking about bones and you have to take it with the right substance the carrier mostly is used is uh, uh, milk for uh, bones in particular and um, a lot of times aloe vera is used as a carrier it's very good for the skin and the blood and like many of these like chawan prash we can see they're in uh, honey and uh, ghee, and that's the carrier. So that's why you don't see rejuvenative products in tea. They're not rejuvenative enough. So um, it's a big subject. It's a whole area of Ayurveda that um, you know you could specialize in. And there's many minerals and basmas that are also used in Ayurveda. And there's also treatments, uh, Rasiana herbs and treatments for particular systems in the body. And we just covered specific tissues. So it is a, 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 a big science. And um, 
I encourage everybody who's aging with no major health concerns um, to do Rasiana uh, treatment on a regular basis. And these type of Rasiana herbs, you know, it's not like you have to come in every month for a treatment. I can load you up on the herbs or you can continue to purchase them um, and go over six months because it's a building type of treatment, not something we were treating a chronic health condition where we really have to keep an eye on the person and, you know, do regular follow-ups as they progress. When you're doing this Rasiana rejuvenation type of treatments, you can go for months and uh, months um, on these treatments and really for your whole life. In fact, what is the goal? The goal here in this type of treatment is to live longer. That's it. That is your goal to extend your life. And that's why they call it in Ayurveda, they don't call it aging treatment, they call it longevity treatment. So when you come and you say, okay, you've treated me, Kabir, for all these health issues, now I would like to extend my life. I would like to rejuvenate my skin to be more you know, youthful. I would like to rejuvenate my mind to be more sharp. I like to strengthen my immunity so I get less infect infections and, and, uh, and such and strengthen my bones as I age. This is what you should be thinking in, you know, even after 50, but particularly after 65, you should be focusing on these types of treatments after you've treated your chronic health conditions. And so feel free to uh, contact me if you would like this type of rejuvenation treatment or find a qualified Ayurvedic practitioner in your area or go to India and that's what we're basically doing in India, um, you know, with our retreat is we're allowing people to get away from their regular life, their pressures, the stress and relax in a, you know, a secluded place where they can receive daily treatments, rejuvenative diet and herbs prepare for them. Of course, many people in these type of retreats, they need a lot of serious treatment uh, for their chronic health condition. But um, not all the time. You know, if you don't have serious health condition, then you could go to the same retreat and just take uh, the rejuvenation treatment. So I think I'll put on my website, you know, rejuvenation treatment, you know, and uh, add it as another category of service and try to encourage this type of service. Um, you could call it prevention. You could call it maintenance, maintenance of your tissue, maintenance of all your systems in the body, making sure everything is strong all your tissue is strong and, and healthy not depleted not just your blood i mean doctor looks at your blood but he doesn't see everything else i mean they can measure bone density and things like this but you know ayurveda is much more deep much more sophisticated and much more concerned about minor imbalances and not just life-threatening conditions so once again i hope that helped you very much i hope you contact me and i hope you all feel more rejuvenated and uh, see more hope in extending your life. And I hope some of you contact me and say, rejuvenate me. I want to do Rasiana Chikisa um, now that you've treated me for the other conditions. And it would be my pleasure to do so. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much uh, for your time. And I hope sincerely this has benefited you. And I hope my knowledge of Ayurveda has been sufficient. And uh, feel free to comment if there's something I'm missing or there's any error in my teachings as I do my best to uh, uh, communicate and explain Ayurveda to the extent of my knowledge.